Hi, welcome to Revision Central. Today we're looking at the grade boundaries from June and November last year and hopefully looking at what they'll be like in 2018. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin. Welcome to Revision Central. So this is the first video in Revision Central, which is a new weekly video update for tips, advice, hints, exam strategies, all everything to do with the GCSE maths. Now I'm hoping that you as a viewer are going to be driving this series, letting us know what you want us to cover. And we're happy to cover anything to do with the GCSE maths. We're going to pick a, what well, we've picked a really obvious topic first of all to start with, and that's the grey boundaries. That is the main thing going through people's minds because when you're doing practice papers and you're sitting there at home revising, you kind of know how much you need to do to get to the grade that you either need or want to get. Um, a lot of people want to do maths A level and need a six or a seven to do that. Uh, and obviously a lot of people want to pass, which at the moment is defined as a grade four, although some people want to try and get a grade five because that's the highest you can get on foundation and it's a good grade overall and it kind of puts you above um, everyone else who's got a grade four. So the important thing to note is kind of where you need to be aiming at. You'll know probably a lot of you have done a mock exam by now, so you'll know what you've got on that um, and you need to know how much more you need to go. So let's have a look at the grade boundaries. I'm going to do higher and then we're going to have a look at foundation. So if I just enlarge this, um, you can see these are the higher grade boundaries. Now what I've done is I've averaged out the June and November um, grade boundaries for each of the exam boards. Um, and actually you can see the exam boards were pretty consistent with this. Um, so grade nine is roughly 80%. Um, grade eight is what about 65%. Um, grade seven, roughly 50%. Uh, grade 6, uh, 39%. Grade 5, roughly 28%. Grade 4, um, slightly different um, between the exam boards, but about 16, 17%, somewhere around there. And grade 3, about 10, 11%. Um, so you can see there that there's more or less uh, consistency across the exam boards. Um, some of the grade boundaries actually went down in November, that, but that's natural because um, all the students sitting the November ones, uh, well, m most of them would be resitting it. So naturally the sample is slightly different. Um, so it's natural for the grade boundaries to, to slip slightly, although there wasn't an awful lot of difference. So that's what you're aiming for for higher. Um, let's have a look at the foundation one. So you can see here there's a huge difference between the uh, exam boards now. Um, the reason for that is that um, like AQA and Edexcel are out of 240, OCR are out of 300. The um, exams themselves, basically what happens is the different exam boards naturally will produce different difficulties of exams. I mean, that's a statistical certainty. Um, and so what happened here is obviously the OCR exam, um, looking at this, was a much harder exam, so they had to lower the grade boundaries to compensate for that. So don't look at this and think, oh wow, OCR looks much easier. That's not necessarily the case, just the exam was harder, so therefore the grade boundaries was lower to compensate for that, and that's why we have grade boundaries. And that's also why we don't know about the grade boundaries until they've marked the exams. So looking at this, I mean, grade five, roughly speaking, is uh, low 60s. Uh, I, ass I assume OCR will probably um, generate a m little bit easier or a more accessible exam um, for June. So we're looking at low 60s. Um, grade four is around 50%, so you need to get about half the paper uh, for a grade four. Um, grade three around, what is it, about 35, 36%, somewhere around there. Uh, so high 30s, I would say, for grade three. Um, grade two, um, mid 20s, mid to low 20s um, percent, and then grade one is 10% um, roughly around there. Um, so you can see there that actually uh, between um, Edexo and AQA there was quite um, good consistency uh, down, although obviously they're, they're not uh, exactly the same. Um, the way of reading these, I always get asked, Does that is that per paper, is that overall? The reason I've done it as a percentage is so you can compare the different um, exam boards, but also any um, different tests you do that might not be out of 240 if you just did a single paper for practice, then you can work out the percentage of that paper. 
Um, so you would need to get that percentage on each paper. Um, obviously for 50%, if you did one and a half of the papers perfectly, then you could literally leave the other a paper and a half blank. Now it's unlikely you're gonna get 100% on the first paper and a half, so you'll need to be working at 50% all the way through. Um, chances are you'll get you know, 50, just over 50% on each paper, and that's how you'd get your grade four. It's very rare for a student to get 100% on one and then 0% on another. It, you know, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, or at all that I've heard of. Um, but you do get sometimes uh, discrepancies between the papers. Uh, and looking at the different um, exam boards, there was a huge um, discrepancy between the papers. There was one paper which was known to be much more difficult, one paper which was known to be easier. And uh, some of the exam boards do put out different grade boundaries per paper. And you can see that those actually are very different. Um, and Edexcel um, gives us an awful lot of data about nationally where people um, scored on these things and there was a favourite paper on June and a favoured paper on November so that's just natural again statistically that's likely to happen and uh, there's nothing to say that all three papers have to be the same difficulty um, but I think the the spirit of the exam boards they try and make sure they're roughly equivalent although from memory on June and November there was a much more difficult paper um, so you've just got to aim to get that percentage on all three papers. But if you go into paper two and it's it's a horrible paper and you feel you've failed miserably, it, you can make it up on paper three. So if you've got 40% on, on that paper, you could make it up by getting a much higher score on paper three and then average out for that grade four. Um, now the caveat is obviously there's no way of predicting exactly um, what the grade boundary is going to be like in 2018. The only thing to say is that there's um, there's precedent for them remaining roughly the same. I can't imagine they're going to go up by 10-15%. Um, sometimes they've wriggled within 5%, so they've been 5% more or 5% less. Um, I think the issue with the exam boards at the moment is that they the grade boundaries are too low, so what they're going to try and do is make the paper a little bit more accessible, uh, and that's exam speak for easier, I think. <laughs> more accessible um, so that the grade boundaries can be higher. Um, it's a real difficulty to have the grade boundaries as low as they are um, because uh, in Ofqual, who are the government organisation that oversee the exams, in their opinion, and they've been quite vocal in the past about this, they want the uh, grade 5 on the foundation, the grade 9 on the higher, to be um, very um, out of reach of the normal student. So they want to see that by the actual um, grade boundaries themselves. Um, also, statistically, um, you get an awful lot of bunching, which increases the randomness of just getting a grade five through chance rather than through ability. There's a, a lot of reasons why they want the grade five and grade nine to be a, a much, much higher. Obviously, last year they did it on proportions of students, um, so those grade boundaries are as perfect as they've ever been, um, but that will worry the exam boards. They will want to move those great boundaries up and the only way they have of doing that really is by making the exam more accessible. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I've, talked to quite, uh, I've talked to all three of those exam boards, uh, representatives from them, and any time I use the word easy they, they jump on me and say, don't say easy, no, more accessible, whatever, less wordy, whatever you want to say. Um, so those are the great boundaries. If you've got any questions about any of that, um, please uh, write a comment in the, uh, in the comment section below or contact us and we'll go through the details at the end. Um, so every show I want to um, have a comment. Now this comment is, is quite an old comment. Uh, I think it was sent uh, a few months ago, um, but I thought it was relevant for today. So it says, is there, uh, from John, it says, is there an easy exam board? My school do Excel, at Excel but my mate does AQA. It seems to be easier. Um, statistically speaking, one of the exam boards in any series will be easier. Okay, It will be easier to get the grade that you want. The issue is there's absolutely no way of finding out. Um, your school will be picking your exam board based on the needs of, your, needs of their students. Um, AQA, for instance, have m some multiple choice uh, questions that works for some. Um, Edexcel may have, and I, I, actually all three exam boards have amazing resources, but some schools may feel Edexcel's resources are better, or AQA or OCR for that instance, because they, they all have amazing resources, but they focus on different areas and, and whatever. 
Um, some feel an affinity to Edexo. Edexo is by far the most popular, uh, I believe. It's still the most popular. Um, and I think the vast majority of students um, do the Edexcel paper, but that can be a good and a bad thing. Uh, if there's an issue with it, then it's probably a good thing because there's strength in numbers, if there's a misprint or something on the exam. Uh, but again, enough people do the AQA and OCR for that not to be a problem. Um, I, I don't think it ma makes any difference. I think that when you go into the exam, uh, because the grade boundaries are calculated the way they are, uh, if it is a freak easy exam for some reason, um, and it's managed to go past all the QA uh, at the exam board, then the grade boundaries will just be um, much more tough. Uh, so I don't think there is an easier exam board. Um, I think that um, any, any of the exam boards that uh, schools pick are the right choice until after you've done the exam, until we find out um, whether it was a good choice. Um, and I think the best thing that schools do is just stick with one, get all the resources for that one, um, you know, uh, get to know the exam board, get to know the specification, and then run with it. There are some slight differences of content between the exam boards. Not huge, actually. There used to be a much bigger rift, and there used to be all kinds of modular papers and all sorts. They're actually quite um, standard now. I mean, I've got um, the specifications here of the exam boards, and, and just looking through them, they are pretty similar. If you go through the content, um, there's there's no real difference. I'm just showing you a whole load of <laughs> printouts of uh, ex uh, exam specifications. Fascinating, I'm sure, to some people, but you know, uh, including me, but probably not to you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, so I there is no difference. I wouldn't worry about it. Um, you are doing the exam board that your school have picked, but that's fine. Uh, it could you could be advantage. You you might not be. Who knows. Uh, until the exam. Um, looking at, d talking to, to colleagues uh, across the country um, for the, the previous exams, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of difference. There wasn't one exam board that everyone's desperately trying to, to go to. Um, so, you know, I think it's going to be the same in, in June as well. Okay, um, that's it for today's show. So the most important thing is that if you've got questions or you've got anything for us uh, that you want us to cover, please let us know um, because this whole series, and we're hoping it's going to be weekly, we're going to anticipate that it's going to be weekly, um, is dependent on your feedback and dependent on what you want us to go through. If there's nothing at all you want us to go through, that is absolutely fine. We'll go through a few things and then we'll peter this out. Um, but if there are things you want us to go through, please feel free. It can be questions, it can be um, advice uh, that you need, not anything at all. Um, if you've liked this video, um, please click like, uh, it really helps us. If you dislike the video, please click dislike. Um, and if you want to see more from us and you want to um, keep on top of notifications, um, then please click subscribe and click the little bell notification icon. Um, all of uh, our resources are on, math, on maths.com uh, and they're all free to use and you can register for free and it saves your scores um, and there's more stuff being added all the time. Um, I think we've just added something like 200 videos, I think it's more than that, onto the YouTube channel as well. And we've got playlists and maybe I'll do a video of going through what we have because at the moment uh, it's getting a bit overwhelming. Thank you very much for watching.